There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious for Mancini. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. Yes, it is. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. I know you do, baby. I know. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passy. All right, nothing town to fuck all, Borough. Not you. Your days of giving a shit and being that type of animal are over. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert. Hurting. Longing. Dancing to disco music. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap, it's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous necktie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. 
You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here it looks like a cadaverous spasm. You find no sign of life on your swollen neck. However, putting your hand on your chest reveals an irregular heartbeat. You appear to be alive for now. stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Go ahead, just as long as you don't discard those crocodile babies. Officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28.
<laughs> you should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Of course, at this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. Through a PA system, by other people, whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. There has been precisely no evidence to the contrary. So yes, yes, it's likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. No, no, don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs. stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. Mm-hmm. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs, one of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. A small engraved steel tag says, The Great Skua, Stercoarius Skua. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. <laughs> 